In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we end our two-part look at how to create a slideshow that is what I call beat-centered. That is, you want the slides to transition on the beat of the music. Here is a short example. To do that properly, you have to create it yourself. You can't use one of the automated methods. What we've shown you in the first tutorial is how to take your music track and use the beat detector in order to get the markers you want in your project. We also showed you how to take horizontal slides and crop them so they fill the screen so that you don't have a black bar to the left and to the right. We'd like to add another footnote about that. You also can adjust these markers, these clip markers, once they're on the track. You don't have to go back to your beat detector and start all over again. For example, I'm going to move the playhead over here between these two markers, and then I'll highlight this to activate the track, and I'll right-click and I'll say Add Clip Marker. I can add a note if I want. I don't have to. I'll say No. I'll just click OK. And now it added a marker there. Now if it's not precisely where I want, I can change it. For example, I can magnify my track and say maybe I really want this right back over here. And it will adjust it accordingly. If I don't want that marker there and decide not to change a slide at that beat, I can right click and do remove selected clip marker and it's gone. So you can make all those modifications once you've taken the music track and put it into your system. So what we'd like to show you now is how to manage your transitions. And there are two things to consider when using transitions. First of all, in this particular case, I want to make sure that my transitions are quick. I don't want them to be too long or they won't seem to be syncing with the beat of the music. So they have to be much shorter than I would normally use. So I'm temporarily going to change my default for transition length. To do that, I go up to my settings at the top, which is the gear. And then I click on the second option from the top, which is editing. I notice right now my transitions default to four seconds in length, the box near the bottom. Yours might be four, five, three, whatever. I'm going to drag across that and then type in 0.75 and press enter. So now I have a three-fourths of a second, about 22 frames transition. And I'll click on OK. So now when I bring transitions down, they will all be that length. That's important to me. Now I go into my transition room. Now the good news is you don't have to drag and drop a different transition between every single clip. You can automate the process, and that's what the buttons are for above the timeline. The number one button that's lit, the second one from the left, says apply a random transition to all videos. I don't want to do that because there are some transitions in my main content area that I don't want to use. They just don't fit the style of this particular slideshow. Well, the other option next to it gives me the option of applying a universal fading transition. That's okay, but I'd like more variety than that. The third one deals with transitions to audio tracks, and it really doesn't apply here. I have the one I want is grayed out. It's the one on the left, which says, apply my favorite transition to all videos. Now, why is it grayed out? Because right now, I have no transitions in my favorite container. If I click from the all content down, or I can use the blue arrow from the left, I look at my favorites and it says nothing. So in order to populate that, temporarily I'm going to copy a bunch of transitions into the My Favorites. If I right click on any transition, I'm going to use the blur. I can click on Add To and then the option is My Favorites. 
Let's take the box, right click, add to my favorites. And I can do this for as many or as few of the transitions I want in order to populate that with the ones that I want to use. Add to my favorites. I'm going to add a few more and pause the video while I do that. So I've placed a number of transitions into the My Favorites container. I'll click on that and we'll see which ones I have. I actually chose 10 that I think will work in this particular situation. Now, if you want to remove any of them, you simply right click again and click on Remove from My Favorites. But you notice when I highlight any one of them, now my button on the left, Apply My Favorite Transition to All Videos, does work. So I'm going to click on that. And now I have four options. I can do prefix, postfix, cross, or overlap. I want to do the cross. If I do the overlap, it will change the timing of my images in my slideshow. And I don't want that. So I'll click on cross. That will preserve it. And we, now we see a cross transition at each of these locations. I do have one that didn't work because I have a gap here between these two. And so I would have to fix that. So you may run into that. The other thing that you notice is there are some times where the randomization isn't fully random. Here I have a box transition followed by a box transition. If I want to modify that, well, let's, let's click a slide right here instead. I can simply drag and drop, and it will change that. Uh, here we have two others that are both slide right. I'll take a wipe and drag and drop it, and it will overlap. Very easy, simple way to change. I can also take any transition from any place. It doesn't have to be in the My Favorites. I'll go back to All Content. And I could say, well, I would like this one here. And I can drag and drop it and customize any single transition I want to in my slideshow. So that's how you can modify those. And if I highlight any transition and click on the timer, I'll notice the length of it, and it's 22 frames. It's nice and short, so that will be punchy. So let's move back near the beginning and play a few seconds of this, and you'll see the difference. That is what I recommend doing if you want a nice slideshow that is driven by the beat of the music with short, punchy transitions that don't get in the way of the pace that you want to set in CyberLink PowerDirector.